Hello, my name is Patrick. I am one half of the Concrete Shamans. We are spiritual teachers, shamanic practitioners. We are also re in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction. Uh, we've made a lot of changes in our life. And today we're going to talk about, do you even want to change? Do you even want to change? Because if you don't want to change, then engaging with and listening to and reading spiritual books uh, is just a, a form of mental masturbation. It, it is only feeding the ego and it is not ever going to lead to a lasting spiritual awakening, but it will, but I'll get into that in just a little bit. So I, I did something really stupid in 2010. I started going to meetings uh, without getting a mentor or a sponsor or, or anyone to guide me through that process. I thought, man, I, I can do anything I want. I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out on my own. And that led to about eight years of sheer torture and hell on earth. And what, what had happened, what had happened was, is that after a time I became so embarrassed that I didn't have a, a mentor or a sponsor or anybody to lead, help lead me through the process of recovery that I felt like it was too late. Like if I admitted it now, I, I would not be, be looked upon favorably by the sober people. Uh, but really you, you're never going to find a better bunch of uh, people <laughs> than when you're in a room full of drunks for real. Uh, so this, this little ego uh, tism I couldn't admit that I needed help at that point. I was mysteriously like unable to get sober and stay sober. The, the amount of time that I did have sober was very uh, white knuckle, lots of stress. I was projecting my inner misery uh, into other people in other situations. And what that, what that led to was just further isolation, further grief, further pain. It, it became intolerable. The pain became intolerable. So when I'm helping someone in early recovery or in later stages of recovery is that the pain of staying who you are and the pain of change, you're going to be having to choose between two different types of pain, two different types of discomfort. However, the, the pain of staying the same is unending. Uh, if you have drug or alcohol addiction or anything like that, in your history, uh, it'll end in jails, institutions, or death. Oh my. <laughs> and, and that's, that has been the case, uh, for, for all of us throughout history and time. Uh, it's a, it's a permanent pain. It is an, a hopeless pain. It is a pain where we know that things are never, ever going to get better. And, and in fact, they, they could get worse. However, if we can be in denial of all of that, the denial of, of reality, the denial of what's going on, the delusions, the grandiose nature of, I look at what I can do. I did this all by myself. I didn't need help. That just sounds stupid. That sounds dumb because everybody needs help. Everyone does. And that's how you humble yourself. You humble yourself and admit that you have a problem. You humble yourself and admit that you need help. It's the most powerful thing you will ever experience in your life, the power of, of humility. But if you, if you've got skewed up or warped thinking about what humility is, if you think it's about being vulnerable, the shit that comes out of people's mouths sometimes, uh, it, it is crazy. It is crazy because humility is your greatest strength, but it, it, it comes on when you prostrate yourself before a loving, caring God and universe that knows way more about you than you do, knows way about where you're stuck and what to give you to help you get unstuck. And I've said before, you know, uh, an addiction is, is just a, a malignant, belligerent ego that refuses to give up its space. The, uh, Seth, Seth says, and Seth speaks, the ego is a jealous God who demands its interest served and that gets, gets you to wake up. So let's look at these stages of change. Uh, and this is, this is something I use in helping, uh, other people recover. And also in myself, whenever I'm about to change something, whenever I want to change something, uh, usually I have to hurt really bad 
about something before I decide to change. So I get it completely. This is not a shame and blame session, but I know that some of you out there need to hear this right now. So we're going to go over here to these stages of change uh, from this website. And it the stages of change model explains how deliberate change can happen. The model describes five stages that people go through when changing their behavior. Pre-contemplation, contemplation, getting ready, preparation, ready, action, and maintenance. The model assumes that everyone goes through a similar process when changing a behavior. An unofficial sixth stage is called relapse. At this stage, a person returns to old behaviors. For example, someone might have a beer after a period of abstinence or smoke a cigarette after quitting. Relapse is common. It is best to be realistic about the likelihood of relapsing and to see it as a normal part of the process rather than as a failure. Normal part of the process. Okay, so uh, the pre-contemplation phase. I think this, I, th I really think this started uh, for me, especially in dealing with alcohol, it started probably in after my relapse in 2011 and I'm, I wasn't ready. And so I drank and, and became homeless and all my dreams died and all of that stuff happened. And, um, and once I was in the mental institution, cause you end up in jail institution or death. Um, once I was in the mental institution, uh, and when I got out of that mental institution, I was in the getting ready step. And then uh, I remember my last relapse, my very last relapse. It was very disturbing. Didn't relapse on alcohol. I thought, oh, all I have to do is not drink because if I if I drink, then I then I lose my inhibition. So I need to stay away from alcohol. That is the problem. That is the problem. All I got to do, stay away from alcohol and everything else will fix itself. Oh, honey. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. In fact, it can get a lot worse. And in fact, it can get so bad that you don't even realize how bad it is. <laughs> every, every day. So people who can, people can be in that pre-contemplation phase. And uh, an addiction is ego, okay? So one of the things that people, they say, well, I, I don't drink, so I can't be an alcoholic. And that's that's completely not true. Uh, there there are some of the most alcoholic people I know uh, have never drank a drop of alcohol. It's the behavior. It's the negative thinking. It's the obsession with disease, negativity and physical form uh, that leads us into a delusion, uh, just a complete delusion divorced from reality where. <laughs> Let, let me tell you, I had no idea I was being dishonest until I realized I was being dishonest. You couldn't have told me that I was not telling the truth. I thought I was living in truth. I, I was, I'm living in truth. I tell the truth. I'm a truth teller, except I was hiding drug use. I was hiding relationships like terrible relationships with my family. I was hiding that from everybody. I was hiding all these things, but you couldn't have told me I was a dishonest person because the dishonesty was at the core of my very being, the core of my ego to, to, to start on this foundation of sand of honest. I didn't even know what honesty was. I didn't know what the truth was. I didn't know what any of that shit was. And, and I was ill-equipped <laughs> to handle life where I didn't know what was true or false. And as we move into the new earth, the false can't survive. It won't. So it'll get pulled out of you by hook or by crook. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that exciting to know? Uh, so if you, if you want to change and you're in the pre-contemplation phase, I get it. If you're contemplating changing and you're getting ready, I get it. Preparation, ready, action. So uh, Merrick and I have been getting ready to change. We have been getting ready to change. We have been gathering all of this data like yeah this this sucks i don't like this i don't like this either but i do like this i do like this so on sunday morning uh this week we said let's do all the meditations in the joe dispenza book let's just do them and and just do them and we and we did and th they 
we heard some testimonials from some people that said it completely changed their life. Even Joe Dispenza in his book says that in the first few sessions, sometimes even the first, you're going to see a remarkable change and a remarkable difference in your life. And there's a, a scientific reason for that because Daddy Joe is all about those scientific reasons. And that led us to kind of change the focus of of our podcast video stuff that we're doing here. It's about feeling better. We're, we're becoming more clear with what our purpose is and what direction that, uh, that all of our spiritual stuff is going, the teaching materials, the music, all that stuff. So the stages of change factor into this a lot. Are you contemplating it? You're not ready or are you getting ready or are you ready? And are you ready to take action? So Merrick and I were ready to take action yesterday morning and we did it. It was only 15 minutes. 15 minutes can change your fucking life, but you got to be ready for that. Because if I had done that meditation two weeks ago, I would have said, hell no. I tried to do 90 gym visits in 90 days. That didn't work. That I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that. Dealing with my digestive issues. They had to hurt so badly before I want to change. And I am not unique. I am not a special case. There is nothing special about me at all. We all have this going on. And if you think that you do not have this going on with you, it is a delusion. It is a grandiose delusion. And egos cannot stand that. They cannot stand knowing that they are not special and unique. So when, when people who are seeking change, seeking recovery, seeking spiritual growth, they will come to me or somebody else that I know or some one of my colleagues or whatever, and they will say, I want to change. And then we say, well, all you have to do is this, this, and this. And <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So they, they really don't want to change. They really don't want to change. And if you want to change, identify which stage that you're in right now. Which stage are you in right now? I'll wait. You can type it in the comment below or not. Okay, so now that you know what stage you're in, and, and if you're able to be honest about it, what do you do? If you're not ready to change, keep doing what you're doing. Because because eventually, um, you will change. Whether that's by, I don't know, divine intervention. With me, it was divine intervention. If you're, if you're contemplating change, that's good too. If you're ready to change, uh, th take, take these steps, do this, do whatever. And then there's action. Then there's actually doing the work. And most people will try to do the work when they're not ready. It does. It won't work, but you got to get ready first. You got to get ready to get ready because the change that happens within you will reverberate throughout all your face. All, all space and time. So, and you will have a black swan event and a black swan event is something that'll change everything for you. It'll change it all. It'll just change it. And Merrick and I talk about how we met and, and how God brought us together and it changed everything, not just for me, uh, but for my family, not for just for him, but his family too. It changed everything. Uh, just being in each other's presence had this remarkable healing ripple uh, that went throughout uh, our entire uh, framework of reality. And there were some people who decided they don't want that. They don't want what we're all about. And then there are some people that decided they want what we're all about. And so organizing that, the reorganization of all the molecules and stuff is very profound. It was very wonderful. And I highly recommend uh, a black swan event for anybody who feels like they're stuck in a rut. Cause I was hopeless y'all. I was hopeless. Uh, but as soon as I decided to give up and let God, um, everything changed. And, and if you've not gone through a black swan event like that, uh, and if you haven't, nobody could have predicted it. Nobody could have predicted that Merrick was going to be gay. Nobody could have predicted that I was ever going to get sober. Nobody could have ever predicted any of that stuff. That's what a black swan event is. That changes everything. And, and a black swan event that doesn't change anything doesn't really exist. You can change, 
physically, but not change emotionally. And again, I'm going to ask that question. Do you want to change? Do you want to change? If that answer is no, then turn this video off immediately. Turn it off. It's not for you. This is for people who want to change. Okay, so we're going to go over to the Becoming Supernatural book by Daddy Joe Dispenza. And in this book, he talks about how energy gets stored through trauma, through pain, and all this stuff. Energy is stored in your body. Do you see how animated I am today? This shit is no joke. This shit is no joke. I am filled with creative energy because it's being restored to me. It is being restored to me <laughs> and, by, and to y'all. It is. It feels great. Like yesterday afternoon, we did the meditation once and, and we were like, where is all of this energy coming from? And it's not a crackalacka type of energy. It is not like a meth energy or a caffeine energy. It's like, what do I need to do today? to get this shit done. And, it, and it's remarkable. This is, this goes beyond shadow work. This goes beyond anything, but, but I don't think that I would have been ready for this two years ago. Cause it would have been, it would have been too disruptive. I truly feel like for the past five years of getting sober, staying sober, uh, it was, it was about getting ready to change. You know, it's often said in the rooms that, more will be revealed and more will be revealed. Um, you will understand why things had to unfold the way that they did. You will understand all of that. You won't have any grief. You won't have any resentments and, and, and plucking those things out like lice with a fine tooth comb. Mm, mm, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And it, it, just, it just happens naturally. And, it, and it's wonderful because all this energy that is being stored in your body gets released and it comes up through you. It's wonderful. Um, better, better than any drug I've ever tried. So once this energy becomes activated, the sympathetic nervous system, a subset system of your autonomic, autonomic nervous system that arouses the brain and body in response to a threat in your outer environment turns on and energy begins to move up from the body's lower three energy centers to the brain. But instead of the body being aroused because of some external condition, you are turning on the sympathetic nervous system by passionately engaging the breath from within. As the sympathetic nervous system starts to merge with the parasympathetic pathetic nervous system, another subset of your autonomic nervous system that relaxes your brain and body, such as after a big meal. It is as if this is, it is as if traveling energy from the lower centers is ejaculated into the brain. When this energy reaches the brain stem, a gate called the thalamic gate opens up and all that energy is permitted to enter the brain. Once this energy that was initially stored in the body enters the brain, the brain produces gamma brainwave patterns. Uh, we've recorded many students producing gamma brainwaves during this breathing technique. Gamma brainwaves, which I call super consciousness, are notable not only because they produce the highest amounts of energy of all the brainwaves, but also because that energy comes from within the body instead of being released in reaction to a stimulus in the environment, the outer world. So let's, let's say you got a lot of childhood trauma. Who doesn't, <laughs> who doesn't, you're not special. You're not unique. This whole culture is fucking enmeshed. You're, nobody can escape this shit right now, especially after 2020. Woo. Oh, so and so then you just get into a state of reacting. You're just reacting. You're just reacting. It's just reacting. That's why people get upset over things on TV screens, which is mysterious to me. I was, and this, this might be unpopular. This is an unpopular opinion. Uh, but we hear a lot about, we hear a lot from people who are distressed about the prejudices and the racisms and the sexisms and the, all that stuff in the world. But as two gay guys, we don't care if people are homophobic. We really don't care. You do you, bro. You do you. But yet we hear from people who are like, oh, the racists. Oh, the anti-Semites. Oh, this and that. 
What does that have to do with you? Ask yourself that question. What does that have to do with you? What happened to sticks and stones may break my bones? Who's got you stirred up into all this shit? I tell people all the time, call me the worst names you can. Now, do it. Now, what are you going to call me? <laughs> do it. What are you going to call me? They can't. They usually can't. These people who are so upset about people saying things to the hearing things. Nobody is, if somebody calls me a name, I'm like, you're damn right. And then somebody told me the other day, so, well, Patrick, they're not, they're not, they're not directed towards you. It's towards your community at large. My sister called me a shit dick queer. My sister had some disgusting names for me when, when I, when I was living at home, just some, I don't even know where she got them. <laughs> From a demon? From hell? I don't know. But this, this, or do you want to change? Well, you got to quit worrying what other people think. Uh, people treat us weird all the time because we're a gay couple. They treat us all the time. They used to think we were uh, father and son. They don't think that much anymore. But who gives a shit? Get that chip off your shoulder. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. And see, if you don't care what other people say, there are always going to be racist, homophobes, people who, who, but see, they're, they're living in a delusion. They're living in a delusion of physical reality. Doesn't matter what they think because it's not true. Anything that comes from the ego is not true. It can't be. It can't be. Do you see what I'm saying? It cannot be this way. <laughs> it cannot be true because the ego is false. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? If it comes from the ego, you can ignore it. It's not even true. And so if I tell people that and they get very upset with me as if I'm turning a blind eye to the suffering in the world or that I don't care about what's going on, what does it have to do with me in this time space reality right now in this present moment? What do you want me to do? Create a magic wand and go all over the world and uh, do peace and love on everybody. Well, we tried that. We've been trying that for thousands of years. That has never worked. You have to want to change. You have to want to not care what liars say about you. Cause if somebody's calling you a name, they're a liar because they have reduced the magnificence that you are to just a tiny little point. What, what's the name that they called you? What the name? Oh, honey, they've been calling me names my whole life my whole life. <laughs> if When I was overweight, I was fat. When I was too skinny, I was a rail. When I was, when I came out as gay, I was a faggot, fucking fag, anything. Honey, they have never stopped calling me names. So I get it. I get it. But at one point it's like, that's not who I am. And that's not who you are. And if you're going to get upset by all these people that you don't even know talking about shit that they don't understand, that's ego. The ego wants to feel bad. The ego wants to not feel good. If you don't, if you want to feel bad, then keep that shit up because at some point you're going to realize it. you're going to wake up. And I hope the people who needed to hear this have heard it because if you're going to focus on what's going on in an imaginary world, what's on the screen is an imaginary world. Now there will be, after I say this, there will be, I'm sure that I'll start getting a bunch of news articles and a bunch of Facebook posts. Cause that's usually what happens when I make a video such as this is that here, Patrick, here's evidence. Things are, are so shitty. Look at this going on. Look at this going on. Instead of working to provide evidence about how this could be right. The delusion must be maintained. The delusion must be honored. The delusion the, the see it, feel it, taste it, touch it illusion, which is not even real. That, that research that will be done to prove to me that yes, these children are dying or these people are starving or anything. I can't do anything about that. But what I can do is work on me. And, and it doesn't matter what anybody else in the world is doing. If I want to end homophobia, end it in myself. If I want to end anti-Semitism, end it in myself. If I want to end racism, end it in myself. If I want to end sexism, 
end it in myself. If I want to end depression, end it in myself. If I want to end poverty, end it in myself. If I want to end anything out in the world, it must be dealt with internally. Because if you're worried about what people say out there in the world, you haven't cured it in yourself. And I can't make that any plainer. And on that note, I think I'm done for today. <laughs> I don't know who, which spirit that was, but they came through. I hope it, it became uh, well. So before we go, I'm going to turn over here to um, our website because that one thing I want you to know is that that energy gets restored. You start thinking clearer. You start being able to say, oh, that's whack. That's whack. Uh, but I do want to go back over to this this uh, internet machine and we're going to do a powerful states of reading deck. I like keeping these at the end of the video and I like, I like doing this. So today let's do just a quick three card reading. Uh, what powerful state we are going to be giving that is harmony. So harmony cards being given and what are we going to use to, to support this? We're going to be living in peace. and We're going to be loving what you do. You've got to love what you do. And I love what I do. Uh, so if you want to join our mailing list or support anything that we do on this channel, please check the links below, uh, sign up for our mailing list and our text list. I want you to have a good day. Bye-bye.